Hello and welcome to our next edition of the Geometry Interactive Notebook Flip Through. We are now on unit four for me. This is my fourth unit, which is quadrilaterals. I love how that lines up. In case you didn't notice, unit three was also triangles, but unit four is quadrilaterals. Now this is where many geometry teachers would be fitting in this lesson. I talked about it in my unit one video. This is the um, polygon angles. So I actually teach that first just to get it out of the way. It's also really helpful when I get to symmetry and we talk about rotational symmetry of shapes knowing the um, exterior angles. The sum of the exterior angle theorem. There we go. Okay, so quadrilaterals. So instead of starting off with that lesson, we start right away with the parallelograms. So we do the definition and then we go into all of the different, what are these? Properties. I can't do words. I just filmed and refilmed and refilmed a video before this one. So sorry, just bear with me. But you know, we got um, opposite sides parallel, opposite sides congruent, opposite angles congruent, diagonals bisect. I do consecutive angle supplementary a little bit separately. And then we talk about using the alternate interior angles with the diagonals drawn lastly. So it's a lot. Um, I have two examples for every property in this particular set of notes. And then parallelograms, we will do practice on this for at least one more day. Sometimes I'll do like another two days of practice depending on how things are. Now, as I'm teaching this, it's December. I haven't actually started in real time teaching this unit yet. By the time the video goes up, I think I am. But because it's December and we're getting ready for winter break, I really would like to get this whole unit complete before we go on winter break. So depending on how much time we have, it might be two days of practice or it might be one. After parallelograms, I either do proofs or I'll do the special parallelograms. The past couple of years though, I go into the special parallelograms. So um, we have Rambai for one day, and I devote one day to each. Um, so we talk about the definition, where all sides are congruent. Then we go into the properties where diagonals bisect angles and how the diagonals are perpendicular. So again, we have two examples for each property slash the definition, where we look at different ways that we might be encountering problems with these. And these notes are short. So when the notes are finished, we will go and actually do practice. I used to do worksheets, but now I kind of like doing the Google form because it grades it for the students. So they know right away and they can go back and fix things. That's what I love about the digital activities versus the paper. Like I love paper so students can write things down, but when it's digital and they get that score and they're able to redo it, they'll actually go back and redo it. Because you know when they're doing it on the worksheet, I collect it, they don't know that something's wrong until after the fact. So then next, of course, we have rectangles and we have the definition and the diagonals being congruent. Two examples for each again, just different things that they would encounter with these. And then again, we'll do practice on a Google form for rectangles afterward. And then next we'll have squares. So we have the definition and then we go through all the properties. I talk about how the properties of squares are a combination of the rectile and the rhombus. I say it's like, you know, one's a mommy, one's a daddy, and the squares are like the baby. So it has DNA from both of them. I meant to say like properties or components, but well, that's how the analogy goes, right? I show students a Venn diagram. I have actually a graphic organizer for the interactive notebook. I just haven't included it in a couple years because I forgot about it literally until right now. But I have a graphic organizer that shows like the parallelograms are, you know, this big oval. And then we got the um, rhombuses, the rectangles, they intersect and that's where the squares are. So that kind of helps with understanding that the properties of a parallelogram are going to impact and influence and just be true for the rhombuses, rectangles, and squares as well. Now I can't tell if this is like a popular thing to do, but it seems like anytime people are teaching the special parallelograms, they're all getting lumped in together in one lesson and I tried that at least one year, maybe two, and it was just a disaster. So where my students struggle is all the properties, all the things that they have to memorize about all these different shapes. So I found that spacing them out helps a little bit because it's just too much for students. 
I mean, it's a lot. So I can't imagine actually now trying to teach rhombuses, rectangles, and squares all in one day and having students actually like remember it after that. So our next lesson is on trapezoids. We have trapezoids defined as a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. I know this is like a big debate among geometry teachers, whether it should be that you have trapezoids have one or more pairs of parallel lines, I think is how they're stating it, and that a parallelogram is like a special kind of trapezoid. I don't like that. I want to keep them separate because it's just confusing enough for students. So I do keep them separate. I say it's um, quadrilateral with only one pair of parallel sides. We have um, two examples there. Then we go right into the isosceles trapezoid and the base angles theorem. Actually, we don't do the base angles theorem right away. We talk about the legs being congruent and we do some examples for that. And then we'll go into the base angles of trapezoids. And then we talk about their diagonals being congruent. So we are seeing two examples for each one, except the base angles being congruent. I have three examples. Now, if the camera's picking up any background noise, I apologize. My cats have discovered a box. Then we have the mid segments of trapezoids. Sometimes these are called medians of a trapezoid. It just depends on your textbook. Um, I give my students actually two formulas for this. I show them the one where it's one half, and then I show them one where it's like you would double the mid segment or the median to get the sum of the bases. And then this one just has six examples. This is something I wish I could just teach the same day as trapezoids, but it just gets to be, again, too much. It's a lot of properties to memorize. So mid segments of trapezoids, they get their own day. And then our last lesson for the unit is parallelogram proofs. So in some years I've done the parallelogram proofs right after teaching parallelograms, which is nice, but I kind of like putting it at the end because then we get to review the parallelograms again. And then we can actually do more proofs. Like I could use a trapezoid, I could use rhombi, rectangles, whatever else I wanted. And that just kind of opens up the door to have more going on. So we do three proofs in class and then for practice, I have a set of proof cards based on parallelograms. So the examples here that I'm using in the notes are two examples on it's a parallelogram, prove that triangles are congruent or that even um, parts are congruent. And then we have one where it's proved that this is a parallelogram. So that's everything for the unit. Like I said, it's super short. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm going to link everything that I have pertaining to this unit below in the description box. And as always, thanks for watching.